All right, so we're back in the editor here. Uh, this is uh, part two of the uh, Crete Pong in UE4 series. Uh, now we're going to be setting up the paddle. So we're going to be setting up paddle movement, uh, some material stuff, and a few other things. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're just going to organize this content folder down here. Everything's just been kind of in, just mashed in here. So let's go ahead and just create, um, we'll go and hit, uh, right click on content and create a new folder. And we'll name this uh, static meshes. And we'll create another one called uh, maps. Or we'll make it levels, keeping with the naming convention. And then we'll do textures. Create another one called materials. And create one more called blueprints. Blueprints. Alright, so now we got our things here. Let's go ahead and just uh, we'll grab our reference. And we'll put that into textures. Move here. Take our material. Move it into materials. Our level. Move it into levels. And we'll take our three static meshes. Shift click to select all those. And we'll drag those into the static meshes folder. Great. Go to blueprints. Go to a new fold. Uh, yeah, go to blueprints here. Right click and create a new blueprint class. Go ahead and click on a pawn. A pawn is an object basically in UE4 that can, as it says there, be possessed and receive input from controller. It's like if you imagine a pawn on a chessboard. It's the thing that's being used, you know, to move around. It would be a character in a game or something. Um, these these all have uh, extensive descriptions um, online. But basically, yeah, we're going to be making a pawn here. Pawn is something, it's, it's the character, basically, that you can control. A character is for a specific type of pawn that, like, walks around. But since we're making a simple pawn game, we just need a simple version of it. And you see it creates a new blueprint down here. Go ahead and rename that to BP. Uh, we'll call it Paddle. Right. Or Paddle Pawn. Paddle Pawn. Right. Perfect. Double click on that guy. And then you'll see this window open here. This, this is the blueprint editor. There's three tabs. There's the viewport. You can add it components and pieces and stuff. Construction strip. This is uh, the script that'll run anytime uh, it gets edited uh, or anytime something changes, even when it's not running in the game. And then the events draft will actually be the stuff that'll uh, occur on this pawn during uh, actual runtime of the game. So basically, what we're going to do is we'll go to uh, the viewport. I'll go to the default scene root. So that's just the basic object here. It's as it says there. It's the default root component. Can't be copied, renamed, deleted. Uh, so when you add something to this, add a component, it'll replace that. What we want to add is we're going to add our static mesh because that's what our uh, our object is going to be. It's going to be a paddle. That's why it's called the BP Paddle Pawn. Go to Add Components. Go to Static Mesh, and we'll name this uh, Paddle Mesh. And you don't see anything different here. What you have to do, now that you've created this paddle mesh, and you see it's replaced the default scene component, which is good. Go over to the static mesh tab after being clicked on it. Click on None. And then click on the SM Paddle. And you'll see something appear on the screen. You may have to zoom out a bit. You can use the WAs and D keys. And now you can look at your paddle. Looks pretty good to me. One other thing we need to make note of is uh, right now this paddle does not have any collision on it. And we'll be using uh, physics to uh, change the movement of our objects in the scene. So we need to enable a collision on it. Double click on the uh, static mesh right here. And in this scene, in the static mesh editor you see, there's a little button for collision. See, you can click that on, click that off, nothing seems to change. It's because there's no collision on this object. So click this so that it's on, go to collision, and click on box simplified, the sim box simplified collision. And now you see the little green thing around it. And when you click this on and off, you can see the collision on and off. Sometimes it'll be purple too. That looks good, and sa hit save on that. And go back to the uh, paddle pawn. So now we've got our mesh in here, we've got collision on it. What we want to do now is we're going to go down to, uh, I think it's right over here, one of these settings. Yeah, physics, simulate physics. We're going to use physics for uh, our game, so that way you can take uh, some of the heavy lifting out of uh, figuring out uh, how to make everything work without physics. So that should make it pretty simple. We'll hit uh, this down. Actually, we won't be using physics uh, too extensively, but we'll just be using collision. But you do need uh, the simulate physics for that, uh, basically. Um, so we'll be using simulate physics to set uh, all of our settings. So we use uh, velocity and things like that. Got we got physics on, and now you want to turn off enable gravity. And that looks pretty good. One more thing we're going to change is with this linear dampening here. Uh, that's basically like how quickly the paddle slows down after you let off the the. Uh, keys on the keyboard. We want it to slow down fairly quick. We don't want it to kind of like drag on. So we're going to set this up really high. 
that's going to be 10. So that's going to be a pretty high value for that. And uh, everything else here looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll hit compile and save. And now we've got our paddle, the basics of our paddle set up. So if we go over here uh, into our event graph, we can begin actually setting up some of the functionality for what our paddle will eventually do, which is basically just move up and down. But it takes a little bit of uh, getting used to just kind of figure out how we want to approach this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this right here. This is the event tick. This is the uh, object that's going to run every single frame. And we can use that to uh, take input from uh, our keyboard every single frame and make changes. Uh, one of the things we want to set up is something called a uh, input axis. I believe that's what it's called. So that we can um, we can we can input our fun uh, input uh, the up and down on the arrow keys or W and S on the keyboard. So that way it moves the paddle up and down. We could do it by doing something like this. We could right click in here and type in W, and then do an at W here, and then we could type in S, and we could do an S, and then we could make some kind of an if statement, and you know plug all this in with a boolean uh, value that comes out, and figure out you know if it's you press the W key or the S key. But even easier than that is just setting up one of those axes. So what we'll do is we'll just leave this here for now. Go back to the uh, main menu or the uh, the main scene. Go up to Edit. Go to Project Settings, and then you'll see somewhere in here there'll be a tab that says Input. Axis Mappings is what you want. And Axis Mapping, it'll you know you can read about this more, but it's just uh, it's a way to make it easy so that when you push uh, on the keys on the keyboard, you can have two keys mapped to a positive and a negative value. And that'll work kind of, you know, universally. So you don't have to set up that, you know, press W on the key and then uh, press W on the keyboard, press S on the keyboard. This just makes it so it works very easy. And you'll see how it works once I get into it if you don't know how it works already. So we're going to create a new axis mapping. We're going to call this Move Up. And then we're going to make this, uh, tab this little arrow here. And we're going to put in a W here. I'm sorry. We're going to put in a Up arrow. We'll just type in Up. And then we'll hit Plus again and then we'll put in down. So what this is doing is it's setting up this little axis. So the axis is basically up on your keyboard, the up arrow key is going to be a positive value, oops, I'm sorry, of 1.0. And then down on the keyboard is going to be uh, also 1.0. But in fact, that's not what we want. We want down to be a negative value. So when we open this up, now that we have this set up in the actual uh, project settings here, we can, we can go back to our uh, blueprint for our paddle, and we can use this. I'll show you how to do that right now. So we minimize this. And right now in the scene, we can go ahead in here and we can just type right click and we can type in git uh, move up. And right off here, you'll be able to print out the actual values that you get off the uh, off of that uh, axis. So you can use this to do any kind of things like you know control the paddle or how much velocity you can and when you get a uh, you get the up arrow pressed, it'll put a push out a positive value and you push down on the arrow key, it'll push out a negative value. And then if you just don't press anything, it'll put out a value of zero. That's exactly what we want. So now that we understand that, we've got our axis set up. One thing I want to make note of, uh, we should go back to our axis uh, setup, project settings. And let's actually rename it. Just so that down the road we don't have to worry about this, let's name this play, uh, we'll name it player one move up. That way we know that this is player one's axis. In the future when we make two players, We'll actually have to make a second uh, one of these that'll be using the W and S keys so that player 2 can play as well. So we got that. P1 move up. We go back to here. You'll uh, minimize this. And you'll actually see uh, this, this, this shouldn't be used anymore. Right click again and type in uh, git P1 move up. And now that's the equivalent of it. So you, you need to make sure it's uh, correct. If it had that other one, I don't think it would actually work. So what do we want to do here? We want to make it so if we go back to the scene, that when we push up, this paddle goes up, we push down, this paddle goes down. But it's not forever. We want to make sure that it also stops at the top and stops at the bottom. It should be pretty straightforward, right? Um, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. A couple little tricks to make it work since we're using physics uh, that will keep it from getting uh, a little weird. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. We want to make sure we can get our paddle moving. So the easiest way to do that is we're just going to go ahead and right click and say, type in add force. This is going to be a uh, paddle add force at paddle mesh. That's the name of the mesh right here. So it's at adding a force to that component. Drag the execution pin over to the add force. And then inside here, we're going to be using this value to actually control the force that's being applied to our paddle. 
So we can right click, uh, or let's see, yeah, right click here and type in make vector. Because this wants a vector value, three values, and this is just a float, it's a single value. So all we want to do is we're going to take this, plug it into here, and then we're also going to take this value, and we could plug it right in here, and that should control the x value. Since this is just negative one to one, there's going to be a very, very small movement here, so we don't even need to check actually. Let's just put a little value in here where we can multiply. We'll multiply this by something like, let's say like, uh, I don't know, let me have an idea, maybe something like 30,000. Since we have that high uh, friction or that high uh, drag right here, it's going to make it harder to move, but it'll make it simpler to uh, approach it. So we've got this set up. Let's go ahead and compile and save, and we'll see if anything goes wrong, because it, it should. Maybe you'll pick up already what's going to happen. So we'll go in, we'll just go uh, pick our BP Paddle Pawn, drag that into the scene. Looks good to me. We'll just make sure it's not colliding with anything. And let's see what happens. We'll hit play. And oh, uh, we're just kind of moving around. That's kind of weird, right? So we're not getting the input, we're not getting anything. And it's a little strange, right? Yeah, that's true. The issue here is we've made our paddle, we got it all set up to move, but we need to set up the custom game mode. That way it'll actually use this paddle. So how do we do that? Delete the paddle out of the scene, go into blueprints, right click in here, and we're going to create a new blueprint class. This is going to be a blueprint class of game mode. We'll call this BP uh, Pong Game Mode. Looks good to me. Double click on it and open it up. And inside here, you see there's a default pawn class. Change that, click on it, and one of the first things that come up should be your actual paddle pawn. You can right, or you can left click on that. If it doesn't come up, you can type in like BP, and it should uh, come up there. So you got your paddle pawn. Now, when you start, it should actually set up your uh, your that that object we made as the default pawn. The object is going to control. So hit compile and save. Go up to edit. Go up to projects. Going to come back to here a couple times uh, throughout the tutorial. And we want to set it up so that our default, change that to the new name because we moved the folder uh, just by chance. We want to make sure that we're setting our game mode to be the game mode it's actually using. So the default game mode is just game mode, the default one. We want to use our game mode. Game mode is just basically you know the rules that determine the game. Remember we set that up right here. So see now, we selected the actual game mode. And inside there, remember we set our pawn class. So now this looks a lot better. One last thing we've got to do is we got to add a player start to the scene. This is going to be an area where it spawns in the actual paddle. Uh, that way we can see it and use it and do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So this should work. Uh, there may be a couple more issues, but we'll see what happens. Yes. So see, it's a little different now. You see the zero on the side there? That's a good sign. At this point, what we've got is we've got a paddle that's spawning into the scene, but it doesn't have any camera attached to it. So inside this paddle we have here, under the viewport. You see there's no camera on here, so it's just kind of like making a default one that's in the center of it. And since this is right on the board, it's looking out and seeing that zero. That's okay though. Um, basically, what that way we'll fix that is uh, we'll do that in the next tutorial. But uh, the next tutorial video, um, all we got to do is we're going to add a, a separate independent camera that's going to actually move, uh, or it's going to actually be uh, up in the sky looking down. But in this case, this is all we need. So all right, so uh, now what you want to do is go ahead and just click on uh, BP Paddle Pawn, right? Um, you can open that guy up. And inside here, one of the things we need to change, we just need to make sure we're using the multiplier. Go ahead and plug that right into there. Plug that into X. That looks pretty good. This value also needs to be a lot higher. Let's make it something like, I don't know, a million. I think that's, that's about a million there. And uh, that should do the trick. Maybe it'll move a little faster now. Yeah, yeah, you can see it now. It's actually moving. That's good. That's exactly what we want. Alright, so this might not look like much, but in the next video, you'll actually be able to see the paddle itself. But so far, we've got our scene set up, we've got our reference, we've got our paddles made, and we have our blueprint set up, and our game mode. We have the ability to move our paddle, although you can't see it, and it's very dark. But it's uh, quite, a uh, quite a bit of progress. In the next video, it'll all come together and make some sense. So thanks a lot. Um, hopefully this was helpful, and uh, you know, as I go along with this series, hopefully I'll improve my process and get a little better. Hopefully some of this isn't too confusing. So thanks a lot. Um, if you appreciate this video, feel free to give it a like and uh, subscribe and comment. And uh, I'll uh, see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.